Hello friends, welcome to Programming Concepts. My name is Amit and this is part 57 of ASP.NET Core MVC tutorial. In this video, we will learn what is in-process and out-of-process server hosting in .NET Core MVC and we will implement it practically. In our previous videos, we already covered concepts like web server, how request flows from browser to server, what is Kestrel, and what is ASP.NET Core module. All these previous videos are related, so requesting you to please watch previous videos as well. I will share the link in the description. This video is about in-process and out-of-process. Before moving on to in-process and out-of-process hosting, let's understand what process is in the Windows world. Let's open Task Explorer. And you can see there are lots of processes. Sort them by a name. You can see there are two categories, apps and background processes. So whatever happens in Windows operating system, like you open Windows Explorer to visit C or D drive, you open Notepad++, you run any game, you will find their associated process in the task manager. And every process has its unique process ID. Let's say I run Notepad++ on my laptop. Here you can see we have Notepad++ with an app category because this is not running in background. So Task Manager categorize it as an app. Let's go to the Details section and search for Notepad++. And you can see it has unique PID and its status is running. Once you close Notepad++, it will no longer be available. When you again open it, you will see there is another process ID for this process. So the idea is in Windows, everything run as a process. And I hope you get the concept of process a little better. Let's move on to the slide. Now we have to discuss in process and out of process. But before that, there is one question. Traditionally, with the .NET framework, when we run our application after hosting it on IS, do you know the name of the process which is responsible to run our .NET framework application? If not, then let me tell you. The name of the process is W3WP, short for the World Wide Web Worker Process. When we host our application in IS, they will run under the W3WP process. Let's see that. Let's go to the task manager. And if you haven't created any website in IS yet, you will not find the W3WP process. Let's sort these process by name and search for W3WP. And you can see there is no W3WP. Let's go to IS. You can see we have not created a site yet. Let's go to the application pool. And you can see there are few default app pool created. Click on add application pool from the right panel. Give it any name, say dummy app pool. You can see there are three options within the CLR version. Let's pick version four. If you are not aware, this is the latest version for the .NET framework, not for the .NET code. Let's select that. Leave the managed pipeline mode to be integrated. Leave the checkbox selected. Click on OK. App pool is created. Now, if you go to the taskbar, you will see there is still no W3WP process. Let's get back to the IS and create a dummy site. Right click on sites, add website, give it any name, let's say dummy website. Choose the application pool which we had just created. 
let's go to d drive create new folder let's say dummy site create a new html file within this folder just to check if our website is working or not add a new text document change the name to amit.html Open on text editor and give it any heading. Get back to the IS and provide the path D dummy site. Give any available port, let me change it to 99. Click OK. Let's browse this site. Append our HTML file name amit.html. You can see it points to the correct HTML file. Now, as we discussed, if we have to run the website within IS, it will run within W3WP. Correct. Let's move on to the task manager. And you can see now we have W3WP. Just to confirm if this W3WP process is created because of our website only, please note this random process ID associated with it. All right, let's get back to IS. Click on the IS name at the top uh, from the left panel. Here you can see we have a worker process. Click on it. And you can see the process ID or the PID is the same. All right. Let's end this process from Task Manager. Go to IIS. Press F5 to refresh. And you can see that process is gone. Now, when we refresh the browser, you can see our website is still working. Can you guess why? We just kill the process responsible to run our application. It's simply because our IS again created and associated a new process ID to it. Go to IS, refresh, and you can see now we have different PIDs, and that you confirm the same in Task Manager as well. All right, simple. So, if we have to run our .NET application in IS, it will run within the W3WP worker process. So, we can also say W3WP is the process or more technically, worker process name of the IIS server. Next, let's move on to .NET Core. When initially .NET Core came, it was supposed to run without IS because one of the main reason behind .NET Core is to make it platform independent. So they need a separate process to make .NET Core code run, even in Windows without IS, right? So the process or executable responsible to handle the .NET Core application, Microsoft gives it a special name and calls it .NET or .NET.exe for executable. So now our .NET Core is not dependent on IIS to run. Awesome, right? Let's see .NET.exe as well. Let's go to the task manager. Within the details tab, search for .NET. You can see there is no .NET process available. Similar to what we have seen with W3WP, because we are not using any feature of .NET.exe yet. Let's not host .NET Core app for now to see .NET.exe. If we just build our .NET Core project, .NET.exe is used internally by Visual Studio to build our .NET Core project. Let's see that. Let's go to our project and build our solution. And within Task Manager, you will see that .NET.exe is created. All right. When we host our application without IIS via the command line, you will see this .NET.exe will be in running state. So in short, .NET.exe is the worker process name of the Kestrel server and W3WP is the worker process name for 
IIS server. Remember both IIS and Kestrel are web servers. All right. But there is one problem. There is no console or you can say UI like IIS for this .NET.exe. You have to manage everything via your code. And also it doesn't have all the features which is discussed in our previous videos about the limitations of the Kestrel. So what should we do now? As we discussed earlier, and this is the slide that we discussed in our previous videos, we can use Kestrel as a reverse proxy. So we can host our .NET Core application within IIS as well. But we just discussed if we host our application in IIS, it will run under the W3WP process. Plus, we need .NET.exe to process our .NET Core code. So now, we require two processes to run .NET Core application. If we have to use IIS, W3WP to use IIS features and .NET.exe to manage .NET Core code. These two processes interact with each other internally to make your .NET Core application run. So this is how initially .NET Core launched. You can replace IIS with Apache Nginx or your favorite web server. So the approach will remain the same. But with this approach, there is a slight possibility that maybe after a few years, people will start moving from IIS to some other web server or custom web servers, even for Windows. Because the process is the same. IIS is a public facing web server and Kestrel or .NET.exe is an internal server. So to make it faster than other servers, Microsoft made some modifications and came up with single process approach. Now you can run your .NET Core application without .NET.exe. So they said you can run a .NET Core application with the help of W3WP only, which we are already using as a .NET developer. So the time required to transfer requests and responses from W3WP to .NET.exe can be saved. So now we have two approaches for running a .NET Core application when we have to use IIS. The first one is with W3WP only and the second one is with W3WP and .NET.exe. The first approach where your .NET Core application runs within worker process or W3WP process, we call it in-process hosting because it is running within IIS worker process means within W3WP itself. There is no separate process required. And the second approach where your code manages and run outside of IS worker process or W3WP, we call it out of process hosting because it is running outside the IS worker process. There is a separate process required to run which is .NET.exe to run ASP.NET Core application. Simple extremely simple code is managed and run within is worker process which is your w3wp process then in process hosting and if it is managed outside is worker process we call it out of process hosting in our upcoming videos we will practically host application in is via in process and out of process hosting all right then that's it in this video if you have any queries related to the content of this video do ask me in the comments Till then, thanks for watching.